Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. My name is Johan Gori and I'm here to help show you around Client Engager. In this video, we're going to have a look at where to start. When you first log in, what you need to do to get Client Engager ready for you and your business. So let's have a look at how we do this. So here we are in Client Engager. This is our demo account, so we can't see anything too critically important with information and stuff. But this is the screen you're going to be greeted with when you first log in. What you're going to do is go through a wizard and it's going to ask you lots of questions. But you can skip that and just go to the settings. So all you need to do here is basically fill out the form. So first of all, you put your firm name, the name you want any text messages to come from. So it might be a and Accountants or it might be Fred from a and Accountants. It's entirely up to you. Put your company house number and this will be included in the document footer. Confirm that you're VAT registered or not with your VAT number. Again, this is important because it goes into all your company footers, the VAT rate you pay. You can then upload your logo. Now, the neat thing about doing this is it will then get the colors of your logo to create the colored theme that we see in uh, Client Engager. So for example, these green boxes, the reason they're green is because that it's identified the green from the logo. You can also choose a second color, the text color. So this is the text color here, so it's white on here. And this also influences all the branding colors on your client portal, which is what your clients are going to see. You can then put your addresses details in, and then your website, email address, and phone number. Now, these are the contact details that you want your customers to see, your clients to see. So if you want the clients to see your a certain web, web address, then that's what you put on here, and that will go on the home page and include it in the document button. You can choose whether the, an email address and telephone number are involved or a mobile number is involved. So, for example, we've got a telephone number. We haven't got a mobile number. But in this case, we set it up with a mobile number, but not a telephone one. Then it asks you about your core values. Now, if you're a one-man band, you might not be overly bothered by putting anything in here. But if you've got a team like I have, this has been really, really useful just to keep reminding our team every time they log in what their core values of their, our business are. And these core values then come through to the home screen. And the reason we've got a home screen is so that every time someone walks into your office and up to your desk and says, can they have a word with you, whether it's a customer, a client even, or a uh, staff member or something like that, you can just switch to the home screen and you're confident that there's no GDPR issues, there's no sensitive information on your screen because you're just seeing the home screen with the core values that actually you probably want to be quite proud of. Once you've filled out these settings, you then asked about how your company's structured. So we know some companies have got an owner, some companies have got directors because they're limited companies, and some have got partners. And this helps the terminology in the letter of engagement. Country of origin, again, this is really important to determine the letter of engagement information, as is the currency, because that's going to be dotted all over the place. And your professional body. So you can choose from not provided, any of these, through to HMRC if they're who your AML provider is. You can also opt in or out of receiving offers from client engager partners. Partners such as Armalytics, Cresco, QuickBooks, soon to be Timworks, and soon to be Exama as well. So that's the main settings page. The next job you want to do is make sure your default terms and conditions are right for your business. So we set the principal person, the main director, you can select them from your staff list, you can select managers from your staff list. And to do that, we just add our system users on here. And by setting these, this is helping to with all the default and also populate key parts of information on the letter of engagement, your data policy, etc. You need to come in and determine what softwares are going to have access to your data. This is basically to complete the data and the privacy notice within your letter of engagement. So Client Engager will populate it with a GDPR solicitor's approved letter, and we just need to state which softwares you use in your practice so that you can be added. So you can tick the default ones and you can add your own by just typing in and pressing plus. And that will add it to the list for you. You can also have a look. Uh, you also need to determine, determine who your individual data sources are. And individual uh, external data sources as well. 
for anything else that you might be sharing. So with all that ticked, you press save and that'll be your and that'll be your default terms and privacy confirmed and sorted. Then you need to go into your professional letter of clearance. Now there's absolutely tons of these already populated for you in the templates under document and you've got schedules of services and engagement letters. All of these need to be read through by you and just edited to suit you and your governing body because every governing body and every practice has got their own variation of terms, conditions, schedules of services and letters of engagement. You can come in and update these whenever you like. So if we go back to the settings, we also need to determine which services and which parts of the letter of clearance need to go to which companies. So you might apply to all services, you might apply only to a few services. So it's just a case of going through, and if you need to add any of your, any more of these, then you can do so by just pr pressing the plus button, and that's all sorted for you then, and your letter of, of engagement are generated. We also need to look at setting up our staff. So have we got departments? Does each staff member belong to a team or a department? If so, you can set that up in here. And the reason we do that is so that certain jobs can be reported on in department specific ways and deadlines. You add your system users. And when you add a system user, you can give them a name, last name, their initials, their email address, the color that that person represent is on in Client Engager, department specific that they're specified to, and their access. So they can either have user or admin. Admin access have access to all permissions. User access is restricted to what you entail. So you can enable or disable this user. And we can also enable two-factor authentication. You can also change passwords from here for the, if anyone's forgotten theirs. If the user access level is user, you get the opportunity to change the permissions. So these are all different things that users can and can't see. If they're ticked, the user will be able to see them. If they're not, the user won't be able to see them. So you can work out which ones you want to give users access to and which ones you don't. So for example, we might not want all of our team to have the ability to raise signing requests and delete them. Or we may want them to raise them, but they can't delete them without a manager's authorization. Simple things like that that make this really customizable so your team can only see what you want them to see. That's it in this video. That's how you log in. You create the first bit of information that where you fill out your inf company information, your default terms and privacy, your professional letters of clearance, and you add your users. In future videos, we'll be able to go through services and how that works, client data, and how we contact and set up our portals. So we'll go through all of that in a future video. But for today, what we've covered is company information, default terms and privacy, and professional clearance letters. Hope that's been really useful. If you've got any questions, please do reach out to the team at Client Engager. We'd be happy to help if we need to jump onto a Zoom call to take you through anything and help you customize to your practice, then we're more than willing to do that. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next